on. Hey, thanks for taking the time to tune back in. Listen, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to building their retirement accounts and making sure they have enough money in retirement is they spend all their time listening to mainstream media chasing high rates of return. I'm going to show you some strategies today to beat chasing high rates of return hands down. So we're going to get started here and we're going to talk about your circle of wealth. You see, you're like everybody I've ever met. You've had this circle of wealth. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase the size of your circle of wealth. So you're playing a game. You're playing a two-part game. You're trying to accumulate as much money as you possibly can so when you arrive in my world, you don't run out of money. Your goal in life is to live the lifestyle you become accustomed to, adjusted for taxes and inflation, out beyond yours and your spouse's life expectancy, and then pass your money on in the most tax-favored way possible. Well, this is all about your circle of wealth and you have three types of money. You have accumulated money, lifestyle money, and transferred money. Now today we're gonna to spend most of our time talking about how do we find the money we're transferring unknowingly and unnecessarily out of our life. So let's start with lifestyle money. If you know anything about me, you know that you should live like you're going to die tomorrow and plan like you're gonna live forever because you just might, and I can't tell you which one it's gonna be. So when it comes to lifestyle money, the last thing we wanna do is change our lifestyle. We don't wanna be cutting our lifestyle, we wanna to continue to live our life. And the best way to do that and save money for our future is to find that money that we're transferring unknowingly and unnecessarily. Now, if we could just reduce expenses, it's a really good way about doing this. But once again, we don't want to reduce our lifestyle. We want to reduce our expenses. So if our annual income is $102,000 and our annual savings is $6,000 and our rate of return is 6%, a nice standard, easy number to go by, then our annual expenses are $6,000. Interest growth on that is the $360. So 6% of $6,000 is $360. Take away $6,000 from $102,000, our annual expense is $96,000. Now our expenses are made up of everything. Taxes, food, clothing, healthcare, beauty shop, travel, all of that. That's our life expenses. If we could go down and we could just reduce our expenses by 1%, simply 1%, that would be like saving $969 or $960 a year. 1%, if I could get rid of that, that would be like a 16% rate of return on the $6,000. Now think about that for a second. I'm making 16% by simply saving 1% of what I'm already spending. I know that sounds a little crazy, but let's just prove the math here. If you take 16% of $6,000, it is $960. So we just got to find the ways that we're transferring our money out of our life unknowingly and unnecessarily, and then simply don't transfer the money out of our life. Now we're doing that in several different ways. But the thing to understand is, is there's something called opportunity cost. Now opportunity cost over here looks, it's every dollar you acquire, you must choose to spend it or invest it. Invested dollars will grow over time. Spent dollars are gone forever and cannot be recovered. Potential future value of spent dollars is called opportunity cost. So what is opportunity cost? Do you earn interest on, ex on an expense? Is the expense money spent accessible? What would the money be spent be worth at some point in the future if you had been able to invest it? This is opportunity cost. Now I'm gonna give you some examples of that, and one of those would be buying a house. 
But let's look at what opportunity cost really looks like. So here's one example of let's say that we went out and we bought a car for $30,000 and our interest cost on that was, or I'm sorry, if we could have the money to invest and we made 6% on that for five years, we would actually make $10,466. So we could go out and finance the car or we could go out and buy the car with cash. But if we buy the car with cash, we give up the opportunity to make money on that money going forward. So let's go out over here and take a look at what are the six areas that people transfer money out of their life unknowingly and unnecessarily. And we're going to touch on three of these things inside of here so that you can really understand about how to change your life going forward by simply finding those ways that you're transferring money unknowingly and unnecessarily. So one of those is mortgages. Now, there's a huge potential for wealth transfer inside of buying a house. And if you listen to the talking heads out there, they will tell you that you should pay cash for your house. If you have the cash, pay cash for your house. Well, I'll tell you that that is one of the biggest financial mistakes that you will ever make in your entire life. Now, some of the potential wealth transfers inside of there will also be taxes inside of that house and what it would cost to finance the house. So let's just take an example of what that would look like. Let's say that today we have $500,000 and we could go out and buy a house for cash. Now, the first thing you got to understand is that no matter what we do, that house, regardless of how much money we put in it, whether we finance it or whether we pay cash for it, that house is going to go up or down in value regardless of whether it's financed or not. So let's say instead of putting the $500,000 in the house, and buying it for cash, we go out and we finance the $500,000 for 6% for 30 years. Well, that means we're going to have a house payment. So we've got 30 year loan at 6%. That means we're going to pay $579,191, which is more than twice what we actually bought the house for in interest. But did you know that if I took that $500,000 and I invested it over in a safe, tax-free environment over here on the side for that same 30-year period of time, and I made only 6% on it, so I made what I'm paying, I would have $3,011,288 at that end of that 30 years. Now, granted, it cost me $1,079,191 to finance that house throughout that period of time, but I end up with $3,011,288. So I ended up with almost $2 million more than I actually started with. And incidentally, I had the cash over here the entire time to pay off my house should I want to do it. Now, there's a lot of different ways to go about doing this if you're going to go out and buy a house, but you can quickly see what this looks like. And if you have any questions about how this really works, I have a video out on, on here on YouTube. Just go check out the video on how to finance your house and you can get more detail or set up a time with us and we'll be happy to sit down and show you how this applies to you and your situation because everybody is an individual. Now, if you haven't done so already, be sure to go below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you look over here, the second way, now remember, there's qualified plans, there's college funding, taxes, protection, and major purchases, but we're going to talk about qualified plans because pretty much all of you have them. You have an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, a 457, etc. Now, what do qualified plans really do? Well, if you listen to them, what they told you was you should put your money inside of a tax deferred account because you're going to pay on money you would have otherwise paid in taxes. And in the end, you're going to have more money because you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. Well, let's see if that actually holds water. You see, because the fact of the matter is, is that deferred or tax deferred money really only does two things. 
it defers or what we would call postpones the tax out to a later date and the calculation of what that rate will be out to a later date and time where we're hoping that that rate will actually be lower. Well, what tax bracket will you be in at retirement? And incidentally, what will your deductions be when you get in retirement? Now, they told you you'd be in a lower tax bracket, but what they didn't tell you is, is that you're gonna lose three of your largest deductions. Your children, the, the mortgage that you are getting on, on there, is all gonna go away when it comes time to get out there and the contributions that you were putting in your 401ks. These are all your three largest deductions and all gonna go away. And when you get out there, you're assuming you're gonna be in a lower tax bracket. But would it surprise you to know that the highest income taxes have ever been in the United States is 94%. The average has been 56.94% and currently we're sitting at 37%. Now, if that's all you knew, that would be one thing, but did you know that right now today, as we speak, the national debt is just short of $35 trillion with a T upside down. And the unfunded deficit for Social Security, Medicare, and prescription drugs is $217 trillion, which puts us at $252 trillion upside down with a $4.4 trillion budget. Oh, and did I fail to mention that they spent $1.9 trillion just in the last year, more than they actually brought in? I don't know, folks. What do you think? Do you think that taxes will be lower, higher, or the same in the future? If you were a betting person, which one would you bet on? I'm betting on they're going to be higher. So despite the fact that they told us that you'll be in a lower tax bracket when it comes time to retire, incidentally, when they put these ERISA plans back in place back here in the 80s, okay, when tax rates were 70 and 50%, there was a chance you would be in a lower tax bracket. But now we're in some of the lowest tax brackets that we've seen in a very, very long time. What do you suppose your chances are? I'm betting on higher. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at income versus expenses and why it's so important to find this money as soon as possible that you're transferring unknowingly and unnecessarily. And we'll sit down and help you do that and show you how to reroute that money. So in other words, you don't have to spend any more money than you're already spending, but you can put a lot more money away towards your future. So we're going to use a scenario here, and we're going to say that currently today, you're putting out 25% of your income towards taxes. You're putting out 10% towards debt service, 50% towards your lifestyle. Let's make this over here. Let's say your debt service over here is 20%, okay? And you're and 50% towards lifestyle and 5% towards savings. Now, if you look at what that looks like, out over your lifetime, you're going to spend about $3.2 million over here just on lifestyle. Over here, you're going to spend about $1.3 million on debt service. You're going to spend about $1.6 million on taxes. And your savings, by the time you get out there to 65, will be about $668,000. That's not too bad, but it's could be a lot better. So if we could go out here and we could just reduce our debt service to 10% and apply that savings over here, instead of being over here at $668,000, we would get out over here at almost a little bit better than tw two times that number at $1.3 million. Now folks, it's not that difficult to go out and figure out where you're transferring money unknowingly and unnecessarily and change what you're doing. But what you really want to do here is you want to seek to put yourself in control of your money. 
not the banking institutions, the car companies, etc. And if you learn how to build tax-free retirement accounts so that you've got your money and you're in control of your money over here, you get to become the bank. Now, do you remember the game Tic-Tac-Toe? Do you know who won the game when you learned how to play it? <laughs> That's the person that taught you how to play the game. And the saddest part about finances is they're just not teaching you how to play the game. They're constantly trying to sell you clubs. Now, what do I mean by selling you clubs? Well, folks, there's two ways to go about this. And one is, is that if I was going to send you out and play in a pro golf tournament tomorrow, would you want to have the best golfer in the world's swing or their clubs? Of course you'd want their swing. You'd want their ability to play the game. And what I'm trying to teach you right now is the ability to play the game. I'm not talking about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, gold, silver, annuities, life insurance, cryptocurrency, any of that stuff. I'm talking about the ability to play the game. If you learn that there are three ways to grow your money, taxes you go, tax deferred, and tax free, and you just optimize those three things, and you optimize the transfers in your life, you won't need to worry as much about rates of return, which is what they're always selling you when it comes to the clubs. So we want to go out here and we want to remove some of that risk, and we want to work on our swing and not on our clubs. You see, when we get out here, we just want to grow that circle of wealth and we want to make sure that when we get to retirement, we're going to have enough money that we're able to live the lifestyle we've become accustomed to, adjusted for taxes and inflation, uh, beyond yours and your spouse's life expectancy, and then pass our money on in the most tax-favored way possible. Now, folks, if you had a bucket with holes in it, how would you fill the bucket? Now, there are really only two ways to fill this bucket. The first way would be to use a fire hose. Put it in faster than it can actually flow out. But the second way would be to plug the holes. If we can get rid of some of the debt and pick up on some of that opportunity cost and reduce some of those taxes, that's plugging the holes. And if we plug those holes, we will be able to fill that bucket at a much faster rate throughout our lifetime. Now remember, there really only are three ways to grow your money. I'm sorry, there are only three types of money. Accumulated money, lifestyle money, and transferred money. Today we talked about the transferred money. Please, when you get an opportunity, go watch the video on how you pay for your house. That one will certainly change the way you think about things. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to live like you're going to die tomorrow and plan like you're going to live forever. And continue to get your education because when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. Keep smiling and make it a great day.